Hello there, it is Rachel Crawford here at Bethel Assembly of God with our next installment of our online kids church. And as you know, last week we started a new unit where we are diving into unexplored Bible verses or Bible stories. So last week we did a little exploring. Remember, we started with the Raging River and we were going down the river and we learned about... Um, Moses, who had some help from his friend, and that his main goal was to keep his eyes on God. And that's just what we should do, too. So last week, you also found out about my little snake friend here, but I think he needs a name. So if you can think of a good name for my little snake friend here, be sure to have your mom or dad or someone message me with your idea for what our snake's name should be, since he'll be with us for this whole unit. So with our new unit, we also have our memory verse. Let me bring it up here. It says, there we go. Guide me in your truth. Teach me. You are God, my Savior. I put my hope in you all day long. Psalms 25.5. And when we look at this verse, we can really see a good anthem for us, a good, good ideas for us. So we're asking God to guide us in truth, right? He knows all the truth and he can show it to us. And it says, teach me. We don't know everything. Even adults and moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas, we're all still always learning. So this verse is important because we're asking God to teach us. And we say, you are God, my savior. I put my hope in you all day long. So just like Moses kept his eyes on God, we should keep our eyes on God and keep our hope in him. So this week, when you practice your memory verse, try going back and forth with a friend. It could be an older sibling or a mom or dad, and go back, each of you saying one of the words. So I would say guide, and then you would say me, and then I would say in, and you would say your. So back and forth, and after you do it a couple of times, see how fast you can do it. Okay? All right. So we started talking about the fact that as we are doing these unexplored stories that we're talking about the jungle. So the jungle is a wild, untamed place. It is a place where plants grow free and uninhibited by any gardener. So there's nobody in there pulling weeds or deciding what flowers grow here or there. It is a place where monkeys and snakes, big cats and other amazing animals live and roam free. No fences, no borders, nothing. It is one of the last untamed, wild, and free places in the world. But just because the jungle is wild and dangerous, that doesn't mean it is completely lawless. There are rules and laws to be followed, even in the jungle. These laws deal mostly with conservation. You can't just walk into the jungle and take any plant that you want. You can't go into the jungle and randomly shoot an animal or a jaguar. Jungles are governed by the laws of the country where they are located. And if you violate those laws set in place to protect those jungles, you will find yourself in big trouble. But beyond the written laws of the jungle, it is a set of rules even more important to know. The unwritten rules of the jungle are all about survival. They are rules crafted and revised over centuries of exploration, created to make exploring the jungle not easy, but safe. The jungle is filled with dangers of all kinds, and it's not just the predators that can harm you. If you go into the jungle without proper equipment, like food and clean water, or if you go without something like a first aid kit or some sort of compass or GPS system, if you go without wearing the proper attire, if you know they say that you should actually wear pants and not shorts in the jungle just because of all the, the plants that could be poisonous. But if you go without any of these essential things, you may never come back. 
I think we can all agree that the rules of the jungle exist for one reason. They were created to keep people safe, right? There's no way to stay 100% safe in a jungle, but by learning and obeying rules of the jungle, you will find surviving the jungle to be less of a challenge than it would be if you ignored the rules. Many people look at God's laws in the Bible as a set of unfair rules. They read the Ten Commandments, which I'm sure many of you have heard about the Ten Commandments, and they envision God as an old school teacher trying to keep them from having fun. But the rules God made for us are to follow in the Bible have the same purpose as the rules of a jungle. If we follow the rules, we will be safe, safe from sin. We will also keep ourselves from harming others with our sin, and we will avoid the negative consequences that come from sinning. Well, in the Bible, we're going to learn about a man who failed to understand the importance of following God's rules. And he was the first king of Israel. You think, oh, well, kings, you know, they make all the rules and they don't have to follow it. But they still do. They have to follow God's rules. So this person was the first king of Israel. His name was Saul. And Saul had a real problem respecting God's authority. He was the king and he thought he was above all of those rules. Saul ignored God's rules one time too many, and his refusal to listen to God cost him dearly. So today we're going to be reading uh, in the Old Testament, and we're going to be reading in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, and it'll be chapter 15. So 1 Samuel 15, and we'll start at verse 1. And it said... Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people of Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men, women, children, infants, cattle, sheep, camels, and donkeys. So this is an important note to make. God told Saul that he had to destroy everything. He couldn't keep anything from the Amalekites. Looking at verse 7... Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Aga, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Aga, the king, and the best of the sheep, cattle, and fat calves, and lambs, Everything that was good, they didn't destroy it. They, these they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early the next morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gilgal. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, The Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, What then is the bleeding of the sheep that I hear in my ears? What is the lowing of the cattle that I hear? And Saul answered, The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, Samuel said to Saul. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. 
tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, although you were once small in your own eyes, did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission saying, go and completely destroy these wicked people, the Amalekites. Wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you pounce on the plunder and do evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites, and I brought back Aga their king. The soldiers took the sheep and cattle from the plunder, and the best of that was devoted to God in order to sacrifice them to the Lord your God at Gilgal. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid the men of the men, and so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sin and come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to him, I will not go back with you. You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. So God gave Saul very specific orders when he sent Saul into battle against the Amalekites. Had Saul obeyed God and done everything that the Lord commanded, God would have continued to bless Saul's reign as king. But after defeating his enemy, Saul became greedy. He saw the cattle and the sheep, both very highly valuable things in Saul's time, and he saw a chance to make himself richer. He disobeyed a direct order, and he kept all the livestock for himself. Samuel put it very bluntly when God wants what God wants from us. He wants obedience more than anything. God's word is good, and it is put in place for our own good. Only by obeying God can we live a life that pleases him and become a blessing to others. If we want to survive this jungle, we need to follow God's rules. God laid out his expectations for us early in the Bible in the Ten Commandments. These ten rules are the foundation for living a godly life. Some people view the Ten Commandments as kind of an out-of-touch list of rules, meant to keep them from living life to the fullest. Just like Saul, those people are more concerned with pleasing themselves than pleasing the Lord. The Ten Commandments teach us that how we are to honor God, how we are to honor other people, and how we can avoid hurting ourselves and others. As Jesus later said, the Ten Commandments can be summed up in just two. Love the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. When we follow the commandments, we will put God first in everything. Loving God means realizing that everything we have belongs to God. It means we view our possessions and our money as gifts from the Lord and not our own. Saul should have remembered this and trusted God to bless him rather than taking what did not belong to him. Obeying the Ten Commandments also teaches us to put others first instead of our own self-interest. God wants us to be honest so we do not hurt people with lies. He wants us to be content and not envious of what other people have. He wants us to keep our hands to ourselves and not to take things that don't belong to us or hurt others who anger us. There are consequences for disobeying God, just as there are consequences for not heeding the rules of the jungle. Saul found that out the hard way, and he lost the throne for his son and all his descendants. When we obey God's rules, we will not only spare ourselves from the same fate, 
we will give God the thing he wants most, our obedience. The Ten Commandments show us how to live a holy life, one that blesses other and give glory to God. If we follow the Ten Commandments, we will do no harm to others. More importantly, we will survive this jungle we call life. God is the king of this jungle, so we're going to continue to dig into the Bible so we can learn his rules of the jungle. So let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you have put out these rules for us because you love us. You want to keep us safe. You want us to live for you so that we can live forever in heaven with you, Lord. Help us to trust in you and to obey you, Lord, in everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's find out if you are listening to our story. This week's review is going to be fill in the blank. So let's see if you can come up with these words. Ready? The first one says, God sent the Israelites into battle to fight the blank. What was the name of those people that they were fighting against? It's the Amalekites. All right. Next one says, King blank disobeyed God and stole the Amalekites' livestock instead of killing them. What was the name of that king? Yes, it was Saul. All right. God sent the prophet blank to tell Saul that his son would not become king after him. It's also the name of the book of the Bible we were reading from. Yes, God sent the prophet Samuel. Next one says, God wants us to live by blank rules. Should we live by our own rules or his rules? His rules, yes. We should blank God's rules all the time. Obey. Good. All right. Well, one of the things that we talked about in our lesson is that we should put others' interests before our own. So I want you to think about this week as you're going through your week, how you can put other people ahead of you. What could you do for someone else instead of for yourself? So maybe you uh, have the opportunity to buy some ice cream. Maybe instead of buying it for yourself, you buy it for a neighbor or for a friend or even your brother or sister. How impressed would they be with that? But think about that this week. What can you do for other people? And it doesn't have to be buying something. It could be just the simple fact that, you know, you clean up a mess somebody else made because, you know, they were busy and they didn't have time. So think about how you can help someone before you help yourself. Another thing, just for fun, we were talking about rules of the jungle. So as a family, you can create a set of rules for the jungle. And you should go around the room and each person take a turn. And you can come up with a serious rule, like always have fresh water everywhere you go. Or it can be a silly rule, like every time you see a bug, you have to buzz like it. Or every time you see an animal, you have to act like that animal. So they can be serious rules or silly rules. So you can have some fun coming up with some of your own rules for the jungle. And remember, if you have a name for our little friend back there, be sure to shoot it over. I hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.